Hi everyone, my name is Vasily, and in this video we will continue talking about Aida Fleur. In previous video, Jens talked about the general concepts of Aida Fleur and also showed us an example of how Aida Fleur was used in a real project. And now, in this video, we are going to learn how to use Aida Fleur, how to prepare the inputs and analyze the outputs produced by this plugin. To do this, we will look into the structure of the plugin and understand what are the main objects that one deals with using this plugin? First of all, we'll cover the data objects, objects that represent that usually represent outputs and outputs of a single calculation. For example, a data object represents an input.xml file, which is a, which might be a single input of a flow calculation. Next, we'll consider the calculation concepts or we will see how a single calculation process is represented in the AIDA and how to work with them. And finally, we will switch to the best part of the whole AIDA code, which is the blockchain. In my opinion, the blockchain is the best part because it allows one to automatize the routine tasks to calculate a particular property of a material, for example, equation of states. To begin with, let's talk about the data types implemented in AIDA. First of all, AIDA implements the Python-like data types, for example, an integer number, a string, or a dictionary, which basically colors all aforementioned data types for convenience. Structures are also represented in AIDA. There's a special structure data object that helps one to deal with structures. And finally, one can work with the file data types. For example, a folder data represents a given folder and the remote data represents a folder on the computer where you performed your calculation. Single files are also can be represented in AIDA, for example, int.xml file. However, if you want to work with int.xml file, we suggest you to use a special data type which was implemented in AIDA flow and is called flow in data. Flow in data basically wraps an input.xml file and implements the, a lot of convenient tools to modify the flow in data or extract an information from it. In all of the AIDA flow calculations, you will be using a flow in data to submit a calculation or you will start from a structure and we will construct for imp data using the imp calculation. We will be talking about it in detail during the tutorial. Next, let's talk about the calculation concepts and see how a single flow calculation or a single imp calculation is represented in AIDA and how to work with them. First, we need to define the concept of the code how the code is stored in the database. Before using the code, one has to configure it following the official AIDA documentation. We think that it's relatively straightforward. That's why we wanted to save your time and did it its job for you. And you can find the pre-configured floor and intent codes in the tutorial. For example, here I print out all of the relevant information about the floor code. We can see the reference the name by which you can refer to this code. And this line tells us that this is the floor code, which defines the way how the input files will be prepared and the output file will be parsed. Finally, here we have some information on, on which computer the calculation should be executed and where we can find the code, in which folder we can find the code. All right. Now we have the configured code and it's time for us to think how the calculation process is defined in Flow. There is a calc job object implemented in AIDA, which basically represents the fact that a single calculation was submitted, executed and parsed. Uh, for example, it might be a single floor calculation or an impacan calculation. Let's have a look into the single calc job node which represents a single flow calculation. First of all, 
We have an information in this which says us that it was indeed the floor calculation. Then we have the reference name. These are the PK and UUID. Next, we have an information on creation time. And most importantly, on which computer this was executed. What were the inputs? And finally, what are the outputs produced by the calculation? However, in your real life, you won't use a single flow calculation to perform your project. Because there is a better solution for your flow calculations in the project. And it can help you to automatize your routing tasks or even resolve some technical problems. And it can be done by the concept of the work chains. And now we are going to cover this in detail. So, the work chain represents not a single process, but a set or a sequence of processes. But it's not so simple. You can implement a complex logic behind the work chain in order the work chain decides for you. Let's consider the example of an equation of states calculation. In this type of calculation, one wants to perform a set of calculations for different structures having different lattice constants in order to find the lattice constant which gives ones the lowest energy. And this of course can be done by, by hand, but it's not an elegant way of doing this. In AIDU floor, we have equation of states work chain, which accept as an input only a single structure and some of the, of the input parameters in order to automatically calculate this dependency and determine the equilibrium lattice constant. In this way, we can treat the equation of states work chain as a black box, which basically performs for us all necessary calculations and we should not worry about them. It's much easier to work with such a blockchain rather than performing all of the scaling by hand and then gathering the results. Output of the blockchain will be easier to understand and easy to plot. And now let's have a deeper look to the self-consistent blockchain, which is responsible for converging the charge density. When you submit a single flow calculation, no one guarantees you that you will successfully converge the charge density because several problems might occur. For example, it can happen that in 24 hours only three iterations were done because the structure is too large. And in this case, a single flow calculation will just fail because your supercomputer does not allow you to perform the calculations longer than 24 hours. In case of a self-consistent blockchain, it will understand that you had no time to perform it and will automatically submit new iterations to the supercomputer and the problem will be resolved. So basically the self-consistent blockchain might be considered as a black box which accepts the structure and some configuration parameters in order to converge the charge density and calculate the total energy of the structure. First, using Imgen calculation, it converts the structure you provided to the FLIR imp data type, which is suitable for the following FLIR calculations. Then it modifies it in a way you like, and then it checks if the calculation was converged. Apparently, when it first time enters here, it says no, because you've performed zero iterations and it could not have been converged. Then it submits the flow calculations in attempt to converge the charge density for the structure you want. And then it repeats, it enters the loop for several times until the structure is converged. So basically after each flow calculation, it checks if the charge density was converged, and if not, it submits the next flow calculation. So in the end, we will have the output dictionary where the total energy of the converged structure will be written to, and the folder data type where the charge density will be stored. Now, let's have a deeper look to the input configuration for the self-consistent blockchain. As you see, the self-consistent blockchain accepts the structure and other technical parameters as an input. Let's go through them. First of all, a self-consistent blockchain requires some parameters that define the logical behavior of it. We require calculation parameters they define the behavior of the impgen calculation. We also need the structure 
in order to know for which structure we want to converge the charge density. Next, we should know how many MPI processes the flow calculation should use and what is the queen name on the supercomputer, for example. Finally, we should define the impgen code and the FLIR code that will be used in the warp chain. Now let's have a look to the self-consistent parameters that defines the logical behavior of the warp chain. First of all, we set up the upper limit of an, for the number of attempts to converge the structure or the maximum amount of FLIR calculations that can be submitted within the single warp chain. We don't really want to make an infinite number of attempts to converge a certain structure because sometimes structure cannot be converged and no one can help it. So here we set the upper limit and if the structure was not converged after three attempts, we just say it was not possible to do it. Then we define the total number of iterations within a single flow submission and the convergence criteria. Next, we can define the mode or which parameter will be converged in our calculation. By default, we converge the charge density, but you can switch it to the force or the total energy. For example, if you're interested in a total <coughs> energy calculation only, you can choose the energy mode. And all of the other parameters are purely technical and you won't cover them. Now, let's have a look how the output looks like. The output of a self-consistent work chain has important parameters, such as how the charge distance was developing during our iterations, and what is the total energy of the final converged structure, and how the total energy developed during the iterations. All of this data can be used to have nice plots that can be done using the special plot flower method implemented in AIDA Flora. And here you can just see that it looks like it was a single calculation, but in reality, three flower submissions were performed. And this number is given here. This number says that this convergence was performed in three attempts, and each attempt apparently had 10 iterations. So that's the difference between the self-consistent work chain and a single floor submission. It, the self-consistent work chain can perform several flow calculations in order to achieve the result. Now let's have a look to the concept of nested work chains. As I mentioned earlier, self-consistent work chain submits several flow calculations in order to achieve the results. And the best thing about it is that the self-consistent work chain does not implement the same thing that was implemented in the flow calculations. Self-consistent work chain implements only the logic related to the convergence of the charge density and has no idea how the inputs for the flow calculations should be prepared or how to parse the output files. This is the task of the flow calculation. It was achieved by the use of the flow calculation in the self-consistent work chain. And this I illustrate by an arrow. So you see, if the arrow points from the self-consistent work chain to the flow calculation, it means that the flow calculation was directly used in the self-consistent work chain. In reality, there is an interlayer between the self-consistent and the flow calculation, and the self-consistent work chain does not submit the flow calculation directly. There is an intermediate work chain which is responsible for solving the technical problems that might occur when one submits the flow calculations. For example, it resubmits the flow calculation if the memory was not enough or when there were some problems with the submission. Let's have a look to the other work chains implemented in the AIDA flow package and how they depend on each other. First of all, I already mentioned the equation of states work chain. This work chain uses a self-consistent work chain several times in order to converge the charge densities and calculate the total energy of all of the structures that should be calculated. Next, we have the relaxation work chain, which is responsible for relaxation of atomic positions. For example, using this work chain, 
One can calculate the equilibrium distance between layers in the surface. The equation of states and the relaxation work chain are used by the higher level work chain, the create magnetic film work chain, which we will consider later. We also have density of states work chain and other work chains that can be used for magnetic calculations that we got familiar with yesterday. These are the magnetic anisotropy energy calculation, the DMI calculation, and the spin spiral calculations. And now let's have a deeper look to the equation of states work chain and see how we utilized the nesting and the inheritance in order to simplify the logic in the inputs. First of all, in the inputs, we have a separate space for the inputs of the self-consistent work chain. These are self-consistent work chain parameters, in-can parameters, technical parameters such as MPI parameterization, in-can code, and the FLIR code. These are basically the same inputs as you had for the self-consistent work chain, except the structure. As you already know, the equation of state work chain uses self-consistent work chain for different structures in order to calculate their energies, and that's why we cannot predefine them. Um, but what we can do, we can provide the equation of state work chain with the original structure and define the rules how to obtain a set of structures starting from the original one. Uh, in the equation of states parameters, you can say how many structures we should create starting from the original one, and what would be the volume difference between all of the structures. And finally, we can define our guess where the minimum is located. And using these parameters, we can start the equation work chain and obtain the results, calculate the equilibrium lattice constant. Now, let's have a look to the other work chains, to the more complicated one, to the create magnetic film work chain. This work chain uses the equation of states work chain and the relaxation work chain in order to achieve the result. And the main goal of the create magnetic film work chain is to construct a fully relaxed film of a deposited magnetic layer on the substrate. For example, iron on top of platinum. And to do this, first of all, the lattice constant of the substrate has to be relaxed. And then we should relax the interlayer distance between the magnetic layer and the substrate. And as you see, we implement the logic within a single create magnetic work chain, which simplifies the work. And here we again utilize the nesting of the work chains, and we separate the inputs. First, we have a separate space for the equation of states sub-work chain, where we again define the self-consistent sub-work chain and the equation of states parameters. We have the same structure for the relaxed work chain subspace, where we should define the self-consistent work chain parameters and other logical parameters. And here, it's very important that you are not forced to use the same code and the same input parameters for the self-consistent work chain for the equation of states and the relaxation. They are nicely separated and it's easier to track what parameters where you use. And finally, as for any other work chains, you have a separate dictionary that controls the logical behavior of the create magnetic work chain. And now let's talk about the other work chains available in the AIDA floor package. First of all, let's talk about the magnetic anisotropy energy work chain. Yesterday, during the tutorial, you should have calculated the energy difference for the same structure but the different spin orientations. And this is basically the magnetic anisotropy energy. In order to study the structure, one should perform a set of calculations for a different spin orientations and compare and analyze the energy distribution. This of course can be done by hand using a set of flow calculations, but the more elegant way would be to use the magnetic anisotropy energy work chain. In AIDA, we have two different types of magnetic anisotropy energy work chains. First of all, let's consider the self-consistent work chain. This work chain takes the structure as an input and other parameters that controls the, its logic, 
and then creates a set of structures having different spin polarization and submits a self-persistent work chain for each of them. After some number of iterations, usually it's around 50 or 60, for each of the structure, the data is gathered and the output is created. Next, we have the fourth theorem version of the magnetic anisotropic energy work chain. It accepts a structure and other parameters too, but in contrast to the self-consistent version, it first converges the charge density for a single structure and then uses this data to perform a single iteration magnetic anisotropic energy estimation. And in this case, we end up with the less accurate calculation of the magnetic anisotropic energy, but which takes much less number of iterations that might save you the computational time and the resources. And as always, after the submission of several calculations, the data is gathered and the output dictionary is produced, which is very easy to analyze. Another example of the blockchain is a spin spiral dispersion blockchain, which basically calculates the energy difference between different spin uh, distributions. So there's a spin spiral structure which is defined by a single number, Q. And basically what we want to know, we want to know how the energy depends on this vector. And again, similar to the magnetic anisotropic energy work chain, we can calculate it in two ways. First of all, we can converge the charge density for all of the structures that we want to calculate, or we can perform the force theorem calculations that can save us the computational power. Let's have a look to how the self-consistent version of the work chain works. The concept is basically the same as it was in the magnetic anisotropic energy work chain. First of all, the work chain takes a structure and the work chain parameters that controls its logic and then sets up the self-consistent calculations for each of the structures. It takes about 50 to 60 iterations for each of them, then data is gathered and the output is produced. And in order to save the computational power, one can use less accurate but faster way of doing this, which again takes the same structure as the input, has quite similar input parameters, then performs the reference calculation in order to get the charge density for a reference, and using this reference performs a single iteration for each of the structures in order to estimate the energy. In the end, the data is gathered in a convenient way to analyze. At the end of my talk, I'd like to acknowledge the Flow development team and my colleagues from the Virtual Materials Design team, AIDA developers and our IT department. I would also like, would like to thank my colleagues who took part in the tutorial development and our funding agencies. So, let's summarize my talk. So, today we've looked how one works with inputs and outputs in AIDA, how they are represented, and for example, input XML file is represented by a FLIR imp data object, which is easy to work with, which implements certain methods to modify the input file or extract relevant data from it. Uh, we also had several examples on how the dictionaries were used for the blockchain submissions, how they controlled their behavior. In the middle layer, uh, we have covered the flow calculations that are represented by a calc job objects. And for the flow calculation, we had a specific object which is called flow calculation, which deals with a single flow submission. We also covered how codes are represented, what information is relevant about the codes and how to use them. And finally, we have looked at the blockchain concept, which is which are ready to use key turn solutions for a specific problem. Uh, we covered almost all of the blockchains that are available in the IDA flow plugin, equation of states magnetic anisotropic energy, and other blockchains. 
This is the end of my presentation, and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. Now I will be waiting for you in the tutorial room, and I hope that you will get a deeper knowledge and look on the practice how things work in AIDA floor. Thank you for your time.